If you were paying attention to the market in 2021, then you already know it was a phenomenal year for real estate. We had historic lows in interest rates. We had record setting appreciation in markets all across the United States and especially in Santa Barbara. And more than that, the market was and still is full of buyers with high intent to purchase. What that all means is we saw a 24% appreciation in the real estate market in Santa Barbara. That's 2% per month or over $30,000 a month when looking at the average and median home prices in Santa Barbara. That is massive. In this video, we're gonna be picking apart what happened in Santa Barbara's market, uh, what the implications are. We're also going to look at which areas in Santa Barbara had the most growth and what can we can expect from here as well. My name's Alex Stober, and in this video, we are gonna give you the overview of 2021 and a little preview of 2022 as well. While you're here, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Let's get into it. In 2021, we saw 5% more sales throughout all of Santa Barbara than in 2020. And 2020 was already one of the hottest years on record. Records are being broken <laughs> consistently over and over again in this real estate market because people are just flocking to Santa Barbara from LA, San Francisco, New York. People want a piece of this California coast. And it only, it's only over really 60 degrees to 80 degrees here. Doesn't really rain and it never snows. It is paradise. And what that means is that families, individuals, people from all over are coming to be a part of the Santa Barbara community, especially in Hope Ranch. Hope Ranch saw 44% more sales than in previous years. And its median home price went up to $4.75 million, and the average was $5.8 million. The most notable sales, let me just show you. Most notable sales in the area were 4050 Cuervo Avenue. This home was a five bedroom, eight bathroom home with 8,188 square feet. It has a picturesque historic villa look and it sold for $20 million, $19,900,000. The second highest sale in Hope Ranch was 4335 Marina Drive, right here on the ocean. And it is, it's just a picturesque, <laughs> look at that view, it's just it's gorgeous. It's a four bedroom, four bathroom home and it had 5,265 square feet. This one sold for $18 million. And then finally, 4015 Bahada Lane. This one, right on the ocean as well, beautiful architecture, just a terrific environment. And Bahada Lane actually ended up selling for $17,150,000. It's a six bedroom, five and a half bathroom, 5,851 5, square foot home. And those were just the top three. You should see the rest of them. There were some incredible Hope Ranch sales last year. And yet they actually were not as high as Montecito. Let me show you the top Montecito sales in the area. So Montecito actually ended up seeing the second highest appreciation overall at a 33% median price increase up to $4.6 million in median and a $6.3 million average. The most notable sales were 1655 Fernald Point. This home right on the ocean, five bedrooms, eight and a half bathrooms, 7,886 square feet, 7,986 square feet, and it's right next to the Rosewood Miramar. Absolutely gorgeous home here. Sold for $45 million. 
And then the next one, the next highest was 1104 Channel Drive, which sold for $31,250,000. Also huge, expansive views. Channel Drive's five bedrooms, nine bathrooms. Just gorgeous architecture. And then the third highest in Montecito last year was 699 San Isidro Road. This one ended up selling off market as well. And that was a five bedroom, seven bathroom, 11,193 square foot home. And you can see right here on the map. Yeah, so San Isidro is up here, right above the 192 where you see the star. Gorgeous, gorgeous property. There you have it right there. The luxury market took the cake when it comes to overall appreciation. This was an incredible market for luxury buyers and investors to come into. We see this pretty much throughout history. We have seen just people flocking to Santa Barbara and knowing that this is a really secure place to put put our investments. We, we aren't developing. We don't really have a lot of construction projects. There are a few apartment complexes, but overall what we're seeing is that the permitting process is pretty prohibitive. It's quite alliteration there in order to actually build in this area. So that is encouraging for people who don't want the rents to go down and also don't want to be overly crowded. Of course, SB9 and SB10 are coming down the pike and that means that we could see more housing policies go into place. And yet I will keep you updated whenever it comes to that. Overall, the incredible growth in the American Riviera was spurred by four major factors in 2021. And these are the ones you should know about, especially if you're subscribed to my channel, you'll know about these. What you should know is that the four factors that contributed to the overall appreciation in Santa Barbara were low inventory, of course, that's what has plagued everyone, every buyer across the United States has known that we've had low inventory, high demand because people are moving out of cities and wanting to be working from home in paradise, right? And we're also seeing that we're having dramatically low rates where we're seeing you know 3% to 4% right now. Last year, I was seeing clients get mortgage rates under 3% and amazing refinances as well. That was definitely spurring quite a bit of growth in the overall pricing. And then we saw high inflation. The last numbers from uh, this month in March of 2022 were at 7.9% inflation. And that is just huge. And real estate is such an incredible inflation hedge because of that. And especially if you're using leverage and getting loans from the mortgage, uh, the banks as well, uh, mortgage lenders, then of course you get even more of an advantage whenever it comes to inflation. What you should know is that while a balanced market is about six months of inventory for buyers, we are at about just two weeks of inventory currently and that means that it is just the strongest seller's market that we have on record since we have the MLS data. It's absolutely incredible how much this area has really just blossomed and we have tech companies coming from all over, entrepreneurs coming from all over in order to be a part of this Sunshine community. Uh, we are seeing unprecedented numbers when it comes to this level of inventory and it just keeps on pushing up the, the prices as demand continues to roll in and buyers have been coming all over just to experience the weather, the beaches, mountains, restaurants, views, and uh, so much more. Uh, prices that are shocking when it comes from like San Francisco and New York when you're in high rises and everything's in buildings, right? So lenders have been offering rates you know, under 3% and up to 4% now. Uh, we're seeing rates on the rise and the US government has just been pumping money into the economy in order to stimulate it. And boy, has it stimulated the economy in Santa Barbara as well. So what I would love to look at is the uh, trends in the market for Santa Barbara. What we've seen last year when we're comparing it to 2020 as a whole, is that we really didn't have a lot of price changes. There was a ton of price uh, price discovery in 2020, and in 2021, there was not a whole lot of price discovery. 
Our price changes just dropped dramatically at the end of 2020, and they were pretty stable overall, slight rise in 2021. Our pendings were through the floor, just so low, uh, lots of high sales activity. We, we sold a lot, but we also just were, were not selling nearly as much um, in certain parts of the year as in 2020, obviously because of a huge dip. So then that drove the uh, steady and more consistent sales activity for 2021. What you should know overall is that our new listings have just gone through the floor. We have really not had a lot of new inventory. So if you're a seller out there, you're in a great shape. If you're a buyer out there, as always, reach out for how to strategize and win in markets like this. And then our sales appreciation and sales prices are represented here. So you can see here that the median over the last year has stayed pretty stable. I mean, it's gone up to closer to the mid twos and uh, finished right at 2 million for the median. And then it's quite high for the, uh, the average here, right under 3 million total. And this is including condos as well. So those are the most important uh, local statistics that I would recommend looking at. We can even drill down further into the weekly stats. But overall, what you should know is that we really don't have a lot of homes coming back on the market, our coming soons, our new listings. All of them are pretty much low. They're, they're really low. And uh, what I'm actually seeing now is that we saw 30, 35% less new pending and coming soon listings in February of 2022 uh, versus 2021. So that shows that we, even in winter, you know, you have this slow rise into sales activity and new listings coming on the market as you go into spring and summer. And yet we were real low this year, significantly lower when it comes to comparing us to 2021. And yet from January to February of this year, we actually saw a rise in 11% in overall pending sales. So we are seeing higher sales activity and uh, we we're pretty flat when it comes to January to February in overall listings. So I'm thinking that there's quite a bit of shadow inventory out there, ghost inventory, phantom inventory, whatever you wanna say. Essentially, there are sellers out there who have wanted to sell in the past couple of years but haven't felt comfortable because of you know, just the, the prices going through the roof or COVID and not feeling safe, not really knowing where to go. Things are closed down. Now we have a war going on as well, so this is the best time to stay in touch and uh, keep following my videos. And also what you should know is that there are trends that could reverse what we've seen in pricing in that 24% appreciation over the last year. And then even in 2020, we had a 24% appreciation as well. What you could see is like supply chain and regulatory constraints actually being lifted to increase inventory in different areas. We could also see that rates are increasing over the next two to 24 months. And for every 1% rates increase, we see a price when we see buying power go down by 10%. So if we have a lot of buyers out there like this year or in 2021, we had 33% of all buyers were all cash. And if there are, you know, 67% of all the buyers were getting a loan, then that means that going into this year, if the numbers were the same, then we would see less people being able to qualify for these high prices right now, making them less competitive. Uh, when it comes to pricing, I'm sure it'd be uh, quite a few buyers still, but not as competitive as it was on price last year. And that would drive down buyer affordability. And then we also seeing apartment complexes being purchased and uh, also being built, which is more important because then more inventory comes on the market and that drives down rental rates as well. Uh, some investors need specific rents in order to make investments work. And if they're not able to get those, those rates, then they may be putting those homes on the market as uh, single family homes 
or triplexes in order to uh, go look at other areas that have higher returns, for example. Um, overall, what we're seeing is that all of these factors are all moving. We can't really look at one part of the market and say, oh, well, this is going to drive up prices or this is going to drive up prices because we are just in this state of uncertainty and I am tracking all the data with my team week to week, month to month in order to make sure that we are on top of it for you and you can make the best decision when it comes to purchasing your home here in Santa Barbara or across the country, of course. And I am so happy to have you here. Thank you so much for watching this video. And let me know what you think. I wanna know, do you think that with rates increasing and supply chain issues being resolved that we're gonna see more inventory come on the market? Do you think we're going to see a softening in prices at all? Or do you think we're going to see more of the same? Prices are going to continue to increase. We're going to have a 1990 to 2006 moment where our homes just tripled after they've just doubled uh, in the last two years. What do you think? I want to hear in the comments. Please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Thank you so much.